gold medal, but then I, I settled for a silver medal. Silver medal. So, <laughs> didn't want that gold one to tarnish. It's been a while since I preached, and uh, been a little busy with the relationship. Back coming back from the honeymoon, I heard this morning there was a men's preaching night, and I went, uh oh. Yeah, so I got up here, I put something together, something I've been thinking about, something that kind of goes with the stage of life I'm in. And I didn't prepare like I typically do, didn't polish it off, but I got, I got a main idea about things I've learned. If you were to title this, it'd be things I've learned. Just four quick things. Principles from the Bible that have helped me get where I am. And you know, most people our age, my wife's age and my age, are not doing what we're doing. They're not in college. Maybe they are, but they're not... They're not dedicated in their life. They're not working as hard to get somewhere. They don't have goals in mind. They're off in the world. They're partying at night. They're having a good time. There's nothing wrong with having a good time. We just went on a honeymoon. We went to Panama City. Swam at the beach. It was a great fun time. You know, there's times to party. But you know, sometimes you got to work hard. Sometimes you got to have a goal in mind. And you know, when I was young, my parents instilled in me, you know, life's not all a party. It's not all about what level of video game you're on. You know, if you're at level 563, that is great for you, but it doesn't get you anywhere in life. Amen. Yep. Now, if you go in for a job interview, let me show you what I can do. He's going to be like, wow, you're not the one. You know, just because of that, you just got yourself removed from the jobs list. You know, so many teenagers nowadays don't take things seriously. And so things I've learned, and this is good. I feel, I feel humbled speaking in front of men who have been married much longer than I am, much older, much more wisdom. And, you know, just, just being where I am, I can look a year ago and think about, man, I've learned so much. I was such an idiot back then. I'm thinking in a year, what am I going to think about myself? And, you know, you think five years from now, I'm going to be like, man, I can't believe he could drive a car. You know, it's, it gets to the point of, like, you learn so much each year. As time goes on, I'm thinking, these guys, they got to be looking at me like, this idiot, what is he doing, right? And so it's amazing, though. Things you've learned up to the point you are, what you will learn, and what you have learned. And so, number one, I would say, one thing I've learned that helps you so much in life would be to put God first. Simple principle. And you know, I've noticed in my life, I get fired up, I'm like, I'm putting God first, Bible time prayer, you know, you start to lag. You start to fall back, and you know, you forget. And before you know it, you've gone like a day or two without reading your Bible, without praying, you're like, what am I doing not putting God first? Your life falls apart, you gotta crack back down and put God first. And even for married men older than me, for children younger than me, for all of y'all that are going to one day, going to one day have your own life, have your own family, have your own job, have things in your life that you're responsible for, we should all make sure we put God first. Because you know right now, at 10 years old, let me tell you what, I remember there was nothing going on in your day. The biggest thing in the week was grandma coming over Tuesday. I'm telling you, I'm not joking. When you're eight years old, I'm telling you, that Chick-fil-A, that was what you looked forward to. But then you get to the life where you're like, well, I got a job, I got my college, well, other than that, I got church. And then I've got, you know, I got my wife, she wants attention. And of course, I wanted to go over here and shoot my friends. We went yesterday, shot a bunch of guns, had a great time. That's all my priorities. Oh, I got some other things. I gotta make a sermon for today, don't I? I gotta lead, lead the singing, play the piano. I've got this, that, this, and the other. My college guy, he's contacting me, get a new class. You know, I've got my job. You got all this stuff. I'm still trying to take the real estate exam. I've just passed 60 the hour course. You got a lot in your life. And you know what happens? Oh, I forgot to read my Bible. It's one in the morning. I'm still studying. You know what, we'll, we'll hit tomorrow. The next day comes, what happens? You don't hit it again. Before you know it, you're no better than the guy on the street. You're not even reading your Bible at all. The thing is, we got to make sure in our life we constantly put God first. Mark 12, verse 29, if you do want to turn there, in Mark chapter 12, second gospel in the New Testament. It's the, Mark, the book of Mark was written, and I think the word they use is uh, brief. Very brief. Very short book. Very to the point kind of gives you a synopsis of what all happens when Jesus comes to earth. And I love the book of Mark because it gets to the point, tells you exactly what you need to know and none of the fluff. And in verse 29 of Mark chapter 12, it says, And Jesus answered them, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Lord, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. What is the first commandment? put God first. God first. Love him with all your soul, heart, mind, and strength. As much as you can, put him first above anything else. Before anything else comes, God comes first. That is the first thing I've learned. Over my life, the biggest thing anyone can do, and this is also geared a lot to the younger children, because one day, 
y'all will not be under your parents. One day you're going to have your own. You know, right now, it's kind of crazy. You get married and you're like, I can literally do whatever I want. But then you realize also, and I'm going to face all the consequences. There is no, there's no slack, right? You're like, I could drive all the way to Panama City and I got to pay the gas. I forgot about that part, right? You realize, oh man, if we could buy whatever we want, we're paying. We're paying. And then we're also, you know, we could speed as fast as we want. We could go 120 miles an hour and we get that ticket too. You know, it's, it's sad in one aspect and it's exciting in another. And you realize, you know, you have to become a responsible person. You get all this freedom with it comes all the consequences. And all of y'all, y'all won't have that padding of mom and dad, you know. Oh, I can do this. You know, you steal candy from the store. And they're like, hey, mom and dad. You know, if I steal candy from the store, they're like, buddy, you're going to jail. So it's not the same. You're going to grow up one day. Put God first. Number two, stay on good terms with superiors. And also with your friends, with coworkers, with everyone. Stay on good terms. You know, there is people in this world. And there's Christians. And there's church members. And there's people who are just, they just don't care. They're like going about their life and they're like, you know, I don't really care about you. I just, whoever, if you want to write me off, that's, that's your problem. And, you know, they end up with no friends, right? And they're the people that don't have support. You know, something my parents made a goal of doing, and I try to do as much as possible. There's going to be people that are impossible to please, okay? Those people, you know, you're just like, you're impossible to please. I love you to death and I know you hate me to death. And, you know, we're just going just gonna, to gotta leave it there. I mean, you're just a difficult person. But there, for the most part, we want to stay on a good terms with people, and especially our superiors. That includes God. That includes family, your, your parents when you're under them, and even when you're out of the house. Stay on good terms with your family. You know, that includes your pastor. That includes past pastors. That's a hard one. Past church members. You know, there's church members from the other side of the split, and they got really mad at us. And we were like, oh, you know, that, that's really hard for us. Because we'd like to stay friends. And you know, a lot of them have come back, apologized, we're on good terms now. We may not go to church with people. I, a lot of my friends, a bunch of people came to our wedding and stuff, we left their church. We left their church. We maintained a friendship. I'm good friends with people. We may not agree. We may have differences. Still good on good terms. You know why? Because we try to keep good terms, even though we may disagree, we try to keep good terms with people, gain in favor with God and man. Right? Yeah. And it's good. You know, some people, you're going to be like, okay, we disagree on this. You know, we may have to part fellowship. There's a family. Y'all, y'all know what I was talking about. A little too much arguing. Put a little distance. It's just a little, little too much. Sure. A little too much difference to where we had to put some separation in. And so there is a certain point where it comes to that. But on, for the main part, stay on the good terms with people. That's something I've learned in my life. Proverbs 15.1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger and pastor said this morning to the four ways to grow i think it was like physical spiritual was it mental and social and i like the social you know you do need to grow socially you know you can you can't just live you your spouse and your kids and people do that people do that all the time it's totally fine it is good to have friends though proverbs 18 24 a man that hath friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother and we've had countless people come and be like how did y'all as a couple, Luke and Minna, you know, we're 18. We are not old. We're getting married. So much support. There's so people coming out of the woodworks to support us. You know what it is? We put God first, and a lot of people respect that. We did things the right way. You know, we could have at 16 just run off, just done whatever we want, be the normal teenagers, right? Go in the basement, smoke drugs, just do whatever we want, run around with our friends, wreck cars, break the speed limit, go out late at night, play bad music. All this junk, right? You could have done that. We could have done that. You know, it probably would have been fun. You know, it is fun for a season, but we would not have ended up in the great place we are. Because we did the hard work. We did the homework, right? We went through all the hard stuff. And you know what? We ended up with tons of support. People we don't even, didn't even come to the wedding. People we barely know. Send us money, send us cards. We love y'all so much. Y'all are doing the right thing. Old people come up to us all the time. They're like, we love that y'all did the right thing. Y'all got married and everything. You know why? You gain favor with man and God. You gain, I'm sorry. You gain favor with man when you gain favor with God. That's right. And there's going to be haters. There's going to be haters. But you know what? They're still jealous. They still want that support. They wish they would have done it the right way, right? And you know, that's the good thing. If you do it the right way, young kids, if y'all do it the right way, you're going to have way more support this way than if you did it the wrong way. And you know, you may not want the support. You may think, who cares about my friends? When you get that support, it's going to be worth it. 
And you know, sometimes that support is more than just good job. Sometimes it comes monetarily too. And you know, that's, that's a worldly standpoint, but it is worth it. And we don't do it for the money, do we? We do it to please God. But you know, when you please God, what does he say? All these things will be given you. And you know, it may not be, you know, you could go around the world, work your own job, make a bunch of money. We could both work right now and make a bunch of money. That's not the Bible way. You know what? God provides for his children, does he not? Doing it the right way? Yes, sir. We do pretty good. We, you know, we, it's hard to live on one income. But doing the Bible way, staying, having good support, all these people supporting us, it's a good place to be. Good place because, you know what? We're good in our heart with God. We know God loves us. God is proud of us. And we also know, you know, all of our friends, they support us because of that. Third thing I've learned, the third thing I've learned, first of all, stay on good terms with God. Second, stay on good terms with people you know, superiors. The third thing would be have a goal in mind. So many people nowadays, they just don't know where they're going. So many people, their next goal is that next level in the video game. It's to watch their next video. And you know, there's nothing. If y'all play video games, I'm not down on you. You know, play a little, whatever. Don't make that the focus of your life. Please, please have something else in your life. Have a goal in mind. Proverbs 29 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You know, you won't do anything in your life unless you know what you want to do. You know, if you're going nowhere, you'll get there very easily. There's nowhere to go, right? If all your goal is is to eat the potato chips on your chest, you'll probably do it, and good for you. But if you have big goals, big goals, I don't want no small goals. I want big goals. You know, when I was, I think it was like 16 or something, I was like, no, I was 15, and I was, I was like in... 10th grade, something like that. And I was like, you know, there's this girl at church and I really like her. I got to admit, her name's Mena. I just kind of want her about now. And they're like, well, you're 15. I mean, at least you got to be graduated from high school to start something. I'm like, all right, let's get to it. And so I did two grades in one summer. And I mean, I worked 12 hours a day, night and day. I would go outside where nobody was because it was loud in my house. I have six siblings, a lot going on. And I would do school, 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 school. And you know, that's, that's funny as a kid. I finished high school though. I finished it almost two years early. And you know what? I also got the girl. I had a big goal. That's a big goal. I'm telling you. And then you know what? I said, well, now I'm done with high school. Might as well start college, right? And I'm still doing that. I have, I have a big goal. Hard goal to hit. And then I was like, you know what? Let's get a real estate license. There's a lot of things in life. Set big goals. You may not hit that exact goal in the exact time frame you want. And you may fall a little short, but you know what? You did way more than if you would not have set a goal. That's right. Yeah. Even if you come like 25% of the way to the goal, you've got done a lot more than if you would not have set that goal. Yes, sir. So always make sure to be working towards a goal. Don't just sit there and be happy in life. It's fine if you want to relax for a while, but make sure you have a goal to work towards. And number four is don't give up. Do not be a quitter. Please don't quit. Quitting is the worst thing. There was, we went to a birthday party with her family and one of my nephews was wearing a shirt, or nieces, and it said, bookmarks are for quitters. And I was like, ooh, that's a good shirt. I like that. <laughs> you know, if you got to put a bookmark in the work, you, if you put a bookmark in your book, you're a quitter. I'm telling you, you quit. You better read that book through one sitting. No, <clears throat> not really. But it, was, I, it, gave me, it gave me good material. I was like, you know what, that is a pretty good shirt. Don't quit in life. You know, don't set that goal and then just quit. Work towards it, and if you can't reach it, do your best. You know, die trying or something. But don't quit. Quitting is such, it's, it's bad for you, first of all. And it's bad for whatever you're trying to work towards. It's bad to know, know in your mind, you know, I quit on that. I quit on this. I quit on this. You know what else? That gives you room to quit on other things, too. So don't quit. It says in 1 Corinthians 9, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one obtaineth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And Galatians 6 says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You know, don't faint on the job. Don't quit. You know, in our line of work, we're on tractors, we're working hard. It is a hot day, and you know all the time you feel like quitting. You get about an hour into work, and you're like, I'm ready to quit. And you still got seven hours left. And you're like, oh, man, every day, an hour in, you're like, oh, I'm already sore. I don't know. I just feel like quitting happens every day, does it not? And you know, manual labor jobs, that's why I'm trying to do real estate, because it's not manual. I'm telling you, I cannot handle this the rest of my life. But you feel like quitting. And you know, so many of the time, you just got to set a goal, 
and then just put your earbuds in, just pretend nothing's happening, just go, 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 plow along, plow along, you cannot quit, because if you quit, you know, tomorrow, you're going to quit too, it's going to give me an excuse to quit, it's true. You cannot quit, you know, I want you to think about Jacob for a second, he illustrates so many of my points that I just made, right, he put God first, yeah. and then what did he do, he made good friends, right. his superiors, everything, everybody was happy with them, you know, even, even Laban, he was not an easy guy to work with, I'll say, he was, he was a pretty hard taskmaster, he even made friends with him, what else? Sorry, Dad. <laughs> he's, a, he's a pretty good taskmaster, I'll say. But <laughs> oh man, oh man. The third one was Jacob had a goal in mind. It happened to be a pretty lady. I mean, my goal was also a pretty lady. Maybe something there. I don't know. And then the fourth one was he did not quit, did he? In Genesis, I think it was twenty-nine, verse eighteen. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, "I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter." I'll tell you what, he should have volunteered three or something. Why did he make that bargain? <laughs> he had to wait seven whole years working for one lady. And you know what? He got the wrong one. And so then he had to work another seven years. And you know what? I'm sure he wanted to quit about four and a half years in. But you know what? He kept going. That was hard work. And you know what? The prize was worth it. And he kept going and going and going. And 14 years later, he had the love of his life. And it was worth it. He, ne he probably never rethought those 14 years. He never said, was it worth it? No, it's definitely worth it. It was worth it. Every hour. I'm sure he, he was for sure he wanted that girl so much. He worked all those hours. And what do we do? About three hours into some paperwork or something, we're like, ah, we should quit. Nothing compared to 14 years. I don't want any quitting unless you have worked 14 years in one hour. Then you can quit. I'll give you permission. Now, I want to tell you a quick story. Anybody here know anything about King Tut's tombs? I think there was like millions of dollars of gold in there. I can't remember the exact amount. It was an insane amount of gold. It was like the one pharaoh in Egypt nobody had ever found his tomb. And it was supposed to be like the one that was the, mo the most expensive out of all of them. Tons of gold, tons of jewels. He was a really big king, and they had hid his tomb good. I think it was in the Valley of the Kings. I'm not exactly sure. Don't quote me. I'm doing this from memory. But if I remember correctly, there was this one archaeologist, and he was for sure he was going to find it, strike it rich. And he dug for years and years and years. And he finally gave up. And you know they came back about 20 years later and dug, and they dug 20 feet past what he had dug and found the tomb. Millions of dollars of gold, and he passed it up for 20 feet. Don't ever quit on me and miss that all, all that gold. Don't ever miss such a big opportunity because you want to dig another 20 feet. Don't ever quit. Think about that. I want you to think about this also. If you're in the ICU, they say the people who in their mind think, I'm going to die. You know, they actually have more of a chance than dying. Yes. Yeah. If you were to think, I am going to make it through this, you have more of a chance of living. That's a fact. Don't have a quitting mentality. Don't quit. That's, that's four things in my life that I've learned. Number one, put God first. Always put him first. Number two, stay on good terms with people, especially your superiors. Those are good people to have. You have a lot of support in your life if you do that. Number three would be have a goal in mind. And number four, do not stop until you reach that goal. Don't give up. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for um, blessing this service and giving us good sermons, good wisdom, good preachers. And thank you for the good fellowship we're about to have. Please bless us. Bless the next man coming up to preach. And help us to take these four principles to heart. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.